So welcome uh, to the seventh dialogue of the DEC project. Today, uh, we will discuss about social media and misinformation. Our guest uh, speaker today is uh, Ms. Sonia Haimada, who is a journalist, media trainer, and uh, adjunct professor at the Department of Communication and Media Studies at the University of Athens. Uh, Ms. Haimada, thank you very much for join, uh, joining us in this project. Uh, the floor is yours. Mr. Kino Emanuel Calais, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody here. Uh, I'm Sonia Haimada. I'm a media uh, expert. Uh, my my first role in my uh, professional life is a journalist because once a journalist, forever journalist. Okay, if you are a deputy or a prime minister, you are first. Uh, your first. Um, uh, quality and your first professional uh, role is uh, journalist. So uh, we'll talk about fake news and how to support them, how to fight them. Okay, uh, because fake news is, is a very uh, interesting thing, a very interesting and very sexy issue uh, because uh, it is the main role uh, and the main um, tool of uh, propaganda. So if your mother says that uh, she loves you, she, so you have to take it out of uh, ever. This is a, an American uh, journalism quote. Uh, and the mother says, I love you, my daughter, I love you, my son. And the daughter or the son uh, answers, my sources tell me otherwise. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, uh, I think that uh, it is um, uh, something uh, a food of uh, a food for thought uh, about uh, your uh, obligation to take all the time what everybody says. So fake news is it something new? No, it's not something new. It's something always interesting. Tom Holland, the translator of Herodotus, uh, wrote at Wall Street Journal in the past. A half millennia ago, Herodotus, the ancient Greek writer commonly called the father of history, but not infrequently condemned as the father of lies, was accused by Plutarch that uh, his stories contained always fake news. Fake news is a very old story. It played a role in catalyzing the Enlightenment when the Catholic Church's false explanation of the 1755 Lisbon earthquake prompted Voltaire to speak out against religious dominance. In the 1800s uh, in the USA, racist sentiment led to the publication of false stories about African-American supposed deficiencies and crimes. It was used by Nazi propaganda of Hitler machines to build anti-Semitic fervor. So, a research of MIT proved that the falsehood uh, diffused significantly farther, faster, and deeper, and more broadly than the truth and fake news, travels six times faster than the truth on Twitter X, because the nomination of Twitter today is Twitter X, okay? You remember. Why exactly? Because the nature of internet itself and the absence of control and laws lead to the publication of any information which could be regarded as news, as uh, official information. Why? Because first, because of the human psychology, the fake news ecosystem preys on some of our deepest human instincts. Second, you, you have to put off your... You have to put off, okay? Fake news are very interesting. Fake stories inspire fear, disgust, and surprise, while truth is very boring or sad. Mainly the good news, the good news, the positive news, the lightful news are boring or very sad, depressing. Some people share not because they think it's true, but because it's something their network would want to hear. And let's see this uh, issue, the Tommaso de Benedetti example. Tommaso de Benedetti is a very well-known, very well-established uh, Italian uh, journalist uh, who wrote that uh, 
the Greek uh, cultural minister, uh, Mrs. Uh, not Mrs. anymore because uh, she's dead, uh, Mircini Zorba, uh, says uh, film director Costa Habras has died at 80, uh, uh, 85. What has uh, really happened? It was a Twitter hoax. Behind the farce stood the Italian journalist Tommaso De Benedetti, who had also published the news on the death of others like Dalai Lama and, uh, and uh, Jean-Luc Godard. He spread false news because he wanted to expose the way the media operate quickly, uh, very fast and without any cross-checking. I did it, he says, Tommaso de Benedetti, to expose weak media. Social media, he says, is the most unverifiable information source in the world, but the news media believes it because of its need for speed. So, false information versus uh, fake news. Experts now recommend avoiding the term fake news as it is closely, closely associated with politics. The term false information refers to a diverse range of disinformation covering topics such as health, uh, coronavirus, etc., environmental and economics, while fake news is more narrowly understood as political news stories, like uh, this fake news uh, Trump uh, spread uh, via uh, Facebook in the past uh, uh, during the pre-elections uh, campaign uh, about uh, uh, the Mexico war. So, there are three types, you have to remember, three types of information disorder. We, we, ha we have misinformation, disinformation. What is malinformation? You have to remember that malinformation deliberate publication of private information. When I'm saying something about Alkinos, Kalos, about his private life, this is malinformation in social media. We have to keep this information about misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation refers to those who share fake news without knowing that it is fake, mostly simply because they see their friends or others sharing it. The echo chamber effect contribute enormously to this aspect. The social media system is made of an algorithm that recommends certain news or information to a consumer due to the group in which she or she or he belongs to on the social media, their prior story, a circle of friendship is such that when a friend views something, another friend is recommend the same thing, etc., etc. This is misinformation. When I don't know if this is fake news. This information is when we fabricate, we produce, uh, or deliberately manipulated audio, visual, or text content intentionally created conspiracy theories or rumors. So misinformation is, uh, we have to uh, to say that uh, it's not so, um, uh, we, ha we don't uh, have to, to speak about penalty, to give a penalty uh, in information which is uh, uh, in the topic of misinformation, but the disinformation is when a mass medium knows very well and he has to um, uh, to create, uh, for some reason, uh, some uh, uh, conspiracy theories about politics, health, uh, etc. Popular types of false information: the propaganda stories that are created to deliberately mislead audiences, promote a biased point of view, or particular political cause or agenda. So you have to see at the right that Obama and Hillary. Uh, Obama, uh, he was the, the very previous um, uh, president of USA, and Hillary, uh, Hillary is the wife of um, uh, of uh, Bill Clinton. Okay, uh, now promising amnesty to any legal that votes Democrat, which is uh, uh, absolutely uh, false, uh, fake, and uh, lie. Popular types of false information, the clickbait. What is the clickbait? 
These are stories that are deliberately fabricated to gain more website visitors and increase advertising revenue for websites. Clickbait stories use sensationalist uh, headlines to grab attention and drive click through to the publisher website normally at the expense of truth or accuracy. So clickbait is to take uh, some uh, uh, unique browsers or uh, page views and uh, uh, it's a claim uh, of uh, to, uh, towards uh, advertisers to take more or um, more expensive uh, advertising for the website. Another popular type of false uh, information is the satire and the parody. Lots of website and social media accounts publish fake news stories for entertainment and parody. For example, The Onion, uh, Waterford Whispers, The Daily Mass. In Greece, we have The Vatrahi, uh, if you know it. And uh, uh, it makes some plugs and it may make some, uh, tro it, it trolls, okay, some uh, news and uh, uh, many times, uh, very well established mass media like the national television, Earth, reproduce this news as uh, uh, they are uh, uh, real news, okay? Uh, popular types of false information, another is misleading headings. Stories that are not completely false can be distorted using misleading or sensationalist um, headlines. These types of news can spread very quickly on social media sites where only headlines and small snippets of the full article are displayed or audiences news feeds. You know what is news feeds? It's uh, Iroi, uh, Edition, if you, we are Greek here, uh, Iroi, news feeds, and uh, uh, they uh, falsify the titles just to attract, to clickbait, to attract uh, the uh, attention of uh, uh, the user. The biased and uh, slanted news. Many people are drawn to news or stories that confirm their own beliefs or biases and fake news can prey on these biases. Social media news feeds tend to display news and articles that they think we will like based on our personalized searches. Check other, how can we spot, how can we fight fake news or false information? First of all, we have to check other sources. So, are we journalists? No, we are not journalists. But in this house of uh, internet, yes, we have uh, uh, multiplied information. Yes, we have uh, a lot of sources of information. Yes, they are... Uh, uh, millions of sites uh, all over the world. But of course, we have to cross fight to uh, check any information, or we have to trust uh, uh, a site, we have to trust uh, a source, a mass medium, which we have, uh, we know very well that uh, uh, he has uh, recruited some fact checkers. This is a new role in the, um, in the newsroom, the fact checkers. Uh, they take the um, uh, information and uh, their role is to check the facts. So you are the fact checker of you and you have to, uh, to know that are there reputable news, media outlets reporting on the story? Are there any sources in the story? If so, check they are reliable or if they even exist. Check the facts. Fake news stories often contain incorrect dates or altered timelines. If it's also a good idea to check when the article was published, is it current or an old news story? So, <clears throat> check your biases. Are your own views or beliefs affecting your judgment of a news features or report? Is it a joke? Satirical sites are popular online, and sometimes it is not always clear whether a story is just a joke or a parody. Check the website. Is it known for uh, satire or 
creating funny stories. So let's repeat it, check the, the source. Look at the website where the story comes from. Does it look real? Is the text well written? Is, uh, uh, is there a, some, uh, someone, uh, a well-known journalist? Uh, is there any signature? Are there a variety of other stories or is it just one story? Fake news websites often use addresses that sound like real newspapers but don't have many real stories about other topics. If you aren't sure, click the, on the about page, you know, the about, and look for a clear description of the organization. Okay, about. What's out for fake photos? Many fake news stories use images that are Photoshop, you know what Photoshop is, or taken from an unrelated site. Sometimes if you just look closely at an image, you can see if it has been changed or use a tool like Google reverse image search. It will show you if the same image has been used in other contexts. So this is a great uh, tool, uh, Google reverse image search. Check the story is uh, in other places. Look to see if uh, the story you are reading is on other news sites that you know and trust. If you don't find on many other sites, then it probably isn't fake, although there are some exceptions, as many big news organizations try to check their sources before they publish a story. If you don't find it in Protothem or in Kathimerini or in Wall Street Journal, so uh, either uh, this site, this small site the, or unknown site has uh, the exclusive story or uh, the, the, the majority of, uh, of, this, uh, of, of these stories are faked or um, belong to this uh, misinformation uh, world. There are other techniques that fake news uh, uses. These include using all caps and lots of ads that pop up when you click on a link. This is a trick. Also, think about how the story makes you feel. If the news story makes you angry, it's probably designed to make you angry. If you know these things about online news and can apply them in your everyday life, then you have the control over what to read, what to believe, and most importantly, what to share. If you find a new story that you know is fake, the most important advice is simply don't share it. Okay, some tips. Primary and secondary sources in the digital age. Primary, first-hand information from victims, direct witnesses, people who take decision, the mayor, the president of a company, the prime minister, the minister, legal documents, a forensic specialist, firefighter, author of a report, the main protagonist of a story. This is a primary. Okay. The secondary is uh, people directly involved in decisions without having a say police officer involved in an investigation, but not the lead. A document signed by the forensic doctor say data, studies using data, still firsthand, but the quality could decrease. Some secondary more, someone who did not experience firsthand what we are researching. A spokesperson could very well be a secondary source as well as press statement experts, politician, etc. And other media are secondary and sometimes biased sources. Interviews, even uh, filmed, uh, could be manipulated. And the danger zone, we say with the journalists, are the social media, especially WhatsApp. And all user-generated content, almost everything online. Experts of professional fact-checker approach. Experts of all professional fact-checkers are a small group of professional in various disciplines who are capable of verifying the veracity of certain news items and decide 
whether such information is fake or authentic posit that the strength of expert-based uh, fact-checking techniques lies in the fact that uh, they are small in number, those easy to manage and have a high accurately uh, rate. Crowdsourced of wisdom of the crowd. Uh, you can see here that if I found out something uh, fake news, I can uh, put a signal. If we have free signal in fake news or in Instagram or in even in TikTok uh, now or in Google News, uh, I think that uh, there is a mechanism uh, which is a AI mechanism and they retire the news. They retire the information. Three times you sign that you say that I think this is fake news. So there is no more. And there is a penalty because uh, fake news uh, punish these uh, publishers uh, who uh, publish and uh, give this uh, falsified information, this fake news. Most artificial intelligent tools for detecting and flagging fake news rely heavily on click-through rates, CTR, the position of the stream page increases as the CTR increase, and some fake news types such as clickbait articles usually have high CTR due to it enticing and appealing nature. This is the machine learning approach. And NLP, you know, NLP work with an automated deception detection technique, which involves the application of lexical and semantic analysis with the use of regression clustering, as well as 10 B callings ETL classification techniques, such as binary classification of text where news are classified as real and not real. In a two class problem where it is difficult to detect, a third class may be added such as partially real or partially fake. Hybrid technique. The hybrid detection techniques emerge as an alternative to several fake news detection methods due to the complexity and ambiguous nature, nature of fake news. The combination of other methods is very imperative. The hybrid expert crowdsource approach is uh, relatively a new method that emerges as a result of the weaknesses of the export-based as well as crowdsources-based fact-checker. They use uh, the crowd uh, uh, opinion and the crowd search, your search and your uh, research uh, in the universe of uh, the internet. And this is expert crowdsource approach. And there is a human machine approach. Most machine learning algorithms developed to automatically detect fake news has often uh, failed. This is a um, um, relatively um, old uh, research of Shabani and Shock. No, they found out that uh, one of the limitations of auto automatic fake news detection is low accuracy. Those machine algorithms developed to detect fake news through news content are prone to low accuracy due to the fact that most languages used in writing fake news bypass the detection process. And the deep learning approach. What is the deep learning approach? I don't know that if you can see the video. No. Okay. So I have- We're entering an era in which our- We can only listen to it, but we can't- uh... Says. Okay. So I have to. It's probably because you shared the PowerPoint file. Yes. So yeah, it won't show anything else. Yes, uh, I have to. So, mm. 
Would you? Μπορείτε να το βάλετε εσείς. Σας το στείλα στο... Yeah, let me, let me try. Στο chat. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look... Let me see. If this will work. So deep fake news. Oh, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Like any... you, can me... see, uh, you can see uh, Mr. Obama uh, talking uh, and you can see his lips making this uh, exactly, exactly, uh, uh, you can see the words out his mouth. And is this is, uh, we call it deep fake news. When you take, we take the video, an old video, and you, we put it on the mouth today. So, let's see this video, which is absolutely the great paradigm of the deep fake news. Let me play it. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Jordan Peele created this fake video of President Obama to demonstrate how easy it is to put words in someone else's mouth. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. Not everyone bought it, but the technology behind such frauds is rapidly improving, even as worries increase about their potential for harm. This is your Bloomberg Quick Take on deep fakes. Deep fakes, or realistic-looking fake videos and audio, gained popularity as a means of adding famous actresses into porn scenes. Despite bans on major websites, they remain easy to make and find. They're named for the deep learning artificial intelligence algorithms that make them possible. Input real audio or video of a specific person, the more the better, and the software tries to recognize patterns in speech and movement. Introduce a new element like someone else's face or voice, and a deep fake is born. It's actually extremely easy to make one of these things. There were just some supposed, you know, breakthroughs from academic researchers who work with this particular kind of machine learning in the past few weeks, which would drastically reduce the amount of video you need to actually to create one of these. Programs like Fake App, the most popular and widely available for making deep fakes, need dozens of hours of human assistance to create a video that looks like this rather than this. In August, researchers at Carnegie Mellon revealed software that accurately rendered not just facial features, but changing weather patterns and flowers in bloom. This advance is not yet available to the public, but with increasing capability comes increasing concern. You know, this is kind of fake news on steroids, potentially. Um, we do not know of a case yet where someone has tried to use this to perpetrate a, a kind of fraud or an information warfare campaign, or, or for that matter, to really damage someone's reputation but it's the danger that everyone is really afraid of. In a world where fakes are easy to create, authenticity also becomes easier to deny. People caught doing genuinely objectionable things could claim evidence against them is bogus. Fake videos can also be difficult to detect. Though researchers around the world and at the U.S. Department of Defense have said they're working on ways to counter them. Deep fakes do, however, have some positive uses. Take Sarah Proc, a firm that creates digital voices for people who lose theirs from disease. Speech synthesis is the artificial production of human speech. There are also applications that could be considered either good or bad, like the many, many deep fakes that exist solely to turn as many movies as possible into Nicolas Cage movies. Oh, hi, Mark. Okay. So you can share your PowerPoint again. Okay, thank you. Okay, not. We may look on our time as the moment civilization was transformed, as it was by fire, agriculture, and electricity. And and it make it look like anyone anything at any point in time. Jordan Peele. Sorry. Okay. This is the full screen. Yeah. Great.
Now can you see it? Huh? Okay. Yes, yes. We see the PowerPoint. Thank you. So. You have to remember that uh, there is a great tool. We use it every day in the newsroom in Greece and all over the world, which is truly T-R-U-L-Y. This is the absolute tool of fact-checking. You find a new, you find information in the web universe. So you put the URL in this machine, the fact-checking machine, truly, and you see its trace. Time, the true, so the journalist, the author, okay, the writer, or the cameraman, and some other details or information about the origin of the information. So, from this discussion, keep this tool named Truly. This is the absolute fact checker. So, έχω ακόμα ένα βίντεο να το στείλω. I have yes, another sir. video. May I send it? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And keep these videos. Okay. Let me play it. So let me share it. So the truly media platform is the main tool to counter this information for the European Digital Media Observatory. Okay, it is European tool and platform. Are you seeing? Yes, of course. Okay. In... Uh, should I play the video? Yes, please. This video went viral in September 2020. In the video, we see two young girls in hospital beds in Berlin. They are playing around with masks and tubes meant for oxygen supply. They say that they are doing a test run in a hospital. Yet the video is being shared with the message that images of corona patients shown by the media are fake and staged with actors to dramatize the situation. This claim, however, is false and is misleading. So let's have a look at how we would debunk the video with the help of Truly Media, DW's own verification tool. So we put the video into Truly Media and use the integrated tools to find its origin. We found the original upload through reverse image search, and we were able to contact the girl we see in the video. We were also able to locate the hospital as its name was written on the bed linen. So yes, we do see actors pretending to be COVID patients, but this is not staged for media purposes. On the contrary, it is being used to help real doctors and nurses prepare for worst case scenarios. Und das Ganze wurde gefilmt und zum Beispiel Fehler im Tagesablauf zu finden, wie zum Beispiel durch eine Organisation und nicht um Propagandazwecken zu dienen. Verification is a process and most important, it's about collaboration and sharing expertise. Truly Media is a verification and collaboration platform in one. So that is unique. So on one side, it supports the journalist with a checklist and a tool set to find answers to the questions. When was the video recorded? Where was it recorded? And who recorded it? And on the other side, you can collaborate with colleagues in real time. Of course, myth and disinformation has not just begun with the corona pandemic, but it has definitely seen a surge. At DW, verification and fact-checking has been an important element of reporting for a long time. Well, we see a sharp rise of disinformation and fakes all around the globe. And a lot of these uh, false information are shared very often uh, on the web. And some of these information are even life-threatening. So that's why DW tries to separate facts from lies with our fact-checking. But verification and fact-checking is not always that simple and straightforward. 
we all remember this video of former U.S. President Barack Obama. It was the first such kind of media manipulation that shocked the world. The American people and people all over the world are standing with them. Since then, there have been quite a few other examples. These show that the software and programming behind such deep fakes has become much more sophisticated. DW is aware of this trend and currently working on a tool called Digger to spot and debunk such fakes as well. So what Digger does is uh, we dive into the audio. We separate video and the audio and we dive into the audio and we search for elements, forensic elements, with which we can decide whether something has been manipulated or not. Have you become eager to learn how to do debunking on your own? Here are three tips for you. Number one, watch the item more than once. Slow down and trust your gut feeling. Number two, do a reverse image search to see if the item has been used before. And number three, create a list of tools to debunk content and most of all, practice. You can do that with the help of Quiz Time on Twitter. Good propaganda of Deutsche Welle, okay. Same. Okay. So, this is another um, search an image with Google Lens. Uh, you know how to search, uh, how to search at your mobile, you have uh, um, these lenses. You can use the lenses to check everything, everything uh, there is in, at your environment. You know, know that uh, if I am in uh, the prime minister office and uh, I, I, I could I could use my uh, lenses, uh, Google, Google lenses, uh, I could find. Uh, what is the price of uh, this uh, of his office? Okay, of his desk, of his chair, of uh, the prime minister chair, of the prime minister light, of the prime minister laptop. I could use these lenses to check, uh, but don't trust this uh, um, this application. Uh, you have to check out this uh, every every image you have, and you have to check out by this. Uh, uh, reverse Google image, you put, you upload a file, you upload the image, and then uh, Google images reverse, uh, they uh, reveal uh, the trace of the image. If there is a real uh, uh, photographer, if uh, there is a Photoshop or uh, his trace in the time. So uh, you can, um, use image fact checking 101 with the massive amount of uh, imagery on the web it is often difficult to know at first glance where an image from how it's been used online so uh, you have to use or google image reverse or fact checking 101 for images and last but not least uh, the truth nest this is a very good um, uh, app application for social media. You put there in this Truth Nest application uh, and you find out if uh, uh, this profile or page of Alkinos Emmanuel Kalos uh, is uh, uh, real or fake is falsified, it is hacked, etc. Uh, this is uh, the main um, tool to check out if this is really the official page of Prime Minister. So first you take the truth of uh, uh, this uh, um, page of, or of this profile and then you continue your research in this universe of social media even if it is Facebook or YouTube or um, uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Reddit, etc. So, thank you. Any questions, observations, or objections? Thank you very much for this presentation. Um, before I make my questions, uh, does anyone 
want to ask anything, to say something, or write it in the chat, feel free to do so. What uh, I want to ask, because, okay, you showed us how, as individuals, we can fact check some things that uh, we come across. But the real question is, we discussed it a brief privately before, how can as a society and as governments to, to better equip ourselves and the internet to fight uh, misinformation and disinformation? What's the way forward? Education. Education uh, from uh, childhood, okay? Uh, education, um, some campaigns. Of course, uh, uh, you have to prevent this uh, phenomenon. And if you, if uh, we have uh, well-educated citizens, we can prevent and we can avoid this uh, um, phenomenon of misinformation and disinformation. And uh, if we don't have stereotypes or uh, bias uh, or some uh, racist uh, sensation uh, and this uh, sentiments about, uh, you know, women or homosexuals and uh, uh, black people, uh, etc., uh, I think that uh, we could avoid this um, uh, house of uh, fake news, which are uh, more uh, commercial and uh, more sexy than every other information in the uh, serious uh, parts of, intern of internet and of information. So education and some other tools. Uh, in uh, Greece, we have um, uh, an observatory, which is uh, Hellenic Hoaxis. Hellenic Hoaxis uh, used to be the official observatory of fake news in Greece, but now, uh, Google and Facebook uh, uh, tend to change this uh, partner uh, by Azance France Presse, which is the uh, agency of information in France. So, uh, from uh, Paris, from Paris, from uh, 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 France and Paris, uh, observe our um, uh, media in Greece and. Uh, Probably Facebook or Google or uh, Meta uh, think that uh, we have no any um, a credible uh, university or uh, some uh, institution or some uh, uh, other, <clears throat> you know, um, project which is reliable to make this job. So, friends, observe Greeks about fake news. This is very sad and very depressing in my opinion, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, does anyone in the chat want to ask something or write it in the chat or open his microphone? Uh, I, I have a question. Um, to yes. what extent is community-generated fact-checking effective or useful in combating fake news? Because unlike expert fact-checking, community-generated fact-checking can be a lot quicker and more widespread like in videos that don't go as viral but do, does have a few of the negatives of community so to what extent is it even a, an option this is very brilliant the question it is a challenge and very good occasion to uh, talk about a little bit about slow journalism which is the new tentative in journalism. Slow journalism is the good, the very good and old journalism. Uh, when uh, we uh, report, reportage in Greece means, uh, uh, reportage means uh, search and report and tell the story. So we have to, to, cross, uh, to cross checking and fact checking first. And of course, uh, uh, the speed of fake news is uh, uh, years of, uh, of light uh, uh, versus, uh, you know, the fact checkers. So we have to sacrifice uh, the, the speed to give uh, reliable information. What I'm more questioning is, since sites like 
Twitter have adopted uh, things like the community notes, which are purely uh, user generated. It's not no experts, just people that vote on fact checking. Are options like that even viable because of the speed that they can react to fake news? Like you could get a fake story and two hours later have some sort of response, which is going to be potentially tainted in some way. So is that potentially a good option? No, Twitter is a source. It's not a mass medium. Even if there is a fight between, uh, uh, you know, the great uh, uh, academic uh, community abroad in USA, they fight that uh, the the great, um, uh, the well-known um, social media are media. They are not media. They are social media. Of course, uh, they use some information from the crowd, from the users. So uh, this is the citizen, the citizen journalism, but I think that the citizen journalism is a terminology, is a, you know, um, a term which is uh, has been uh, supreme anymore. There is no citizen journalist because journalists are professionals uh, who write and search about uh, uh, real uh, information and real news. Uh, citizens, of course, they can put they are. Uh, uh, they fit, you know, this source or like Twitter or Facebook uh, with information, but uh, always they have been checked. Uh, of course, uh, the, I, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have the accurate uh, answer about this because uh, you know this situation is very contradic contradictory uh, about uh, fake news and. Uh, of course, I think that social media are the, uh, they multiply the fake news. They are not uh, uh, the origin of the fake news. Even the, so the media are uh, uh, the machines uh, who, which uh, produce uh, fake news. Okay, everybody can produce fake news. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Waris. Um, anyone else, any questions? You can jump in if you have any. Uh, uh, Policy-wise or uh, law-wise, is there much that can be done? Because this whole thing has the challenge that uh, it can contradict uh, freedom of speech to try to to silence uh, posts or what and whatever, uh, because you said about the, the best policies the, to educate the people. Definitely, there are policies, and now we are invited some journalists in uh, uh, Brussels uh, just to follow a session of the assembly about uh, how to uh, fight, how to count uh, fake news. Uh, Mainly, I think that uh, um, we have to focus on ethos, on auto-regulation. We have to be regulated. Uh, we don't need uh, uh, we don't know, we don't need uh, any uh, more legislation because uh, you need you 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 know that uh, uh, legislation is always very slow and uh, uh, technology is always faster and smarter and uh, very quick and uh, you don't uh, uh, we cannot hunt uh, um, you know uh, wizards okay uh, so if we are well educated and uh, we educate you know that uh, fake news are very um, um, spread between uh, the generation the baby boomers 60 and more, because they cannot imagine that something is written just to uh, uh, to, to, to disinform people. Uh, they are not uh, stupid people, but they don't know technology. They cannot. Uh, uh, they they don't know how to use uh, tools like Truly or Google Reverse Image or 101 or other uh, fact checkers tools. So. I think that uh, they are written for them. 
for generate for uh, baby boomers and generation next i think the generation y generation z and generation a which is now uh, 18 they are ready ready to to be uh, 18 or 19 uh, they are more uh, you know uh, they are smarter about uh, uh, fake news and they cannot uh, uh, observe them and they cannot uh, avoid them Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I, I, I hope this is true, but it frightens me that uh, it was in your presentation that uh, what you see in social media, it's what uh, the algorithm knows you like. It, it, uh, it feeds on your biases and it shows you things that confirm your biases many times. So The phenomenon of chamber room. If you educate your algorithms that you are racist and sexist, uh, homophobic, etc., so they serve you, they feed you all the time uh, with this kind of information. But I have to to to, to tell you some uh, tricks, uh, how to find out uh, if uh, we have to do with fake news. So uh, when you you don't uh, have uh, uh, any signature. We we uh, we read uh, information. We read the new in the news feed uh, without a uh, uh, signature. Uh, Sonia Haimanda or uh, Aris Georgiadis or Panayota uh, Katerini Christofilou. If you cannot see or uh, you see a nickname like uh, the most famous nicknaming uh, in journalism in the um, uh, journalistic family is. Uh, 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 I don't remember. Is uh, Yorgos Papadopoulos or uh, uh, John Smith <laughs> for John Smith, etc. If you if you don't know any Yorgos Papadopoulos journalist, it is sure that uh, uh, it is uh, or you know. Uh, first is the no uh, the absence of a signature. The second is colorful shock. Uh, write it before they download it. Uh, 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 unbelievable. If you see this uh, clickbait techniques, uh, it is uh, uh, the majority of times uh, uh, we have to do with uh, fake news. Yeah. Okay. Um, any any other questions as we approach the one hour mark? I've studied in Paris, so my English are not very well in my pronunciation. Uh, sorry for this, but uh, my my friends come first, okay? <laughs> uh, so I think if no one wants to ask uh, any more questions, uh, we are good. Okay. I don't see any more questions. So thank you very much for... It was Thank my goodness. honor and my pleasure to be with you. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, who Ciao. was Bye. here today. Bye. Uh, you, I, I will send you my uh, presentation. Great. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Ciao. Goodbye, everyone. Have a nice evening.